B's been a, a hung, young individual with an opportunity. He's taken advantage of it. That's right. Broncos receiver Brandon Johnson is young and hung. Whew. B's been a, a hung. We may have lost Horsecock Lock and Big Dick Decker before him, but Brandon Johnson seems appropriately named and quite literally ready to fill the void in Broncos country. Let's ride. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am regularly hung football talker Brandon Perna, and after watching the Manti Teo documentary Untold on Netflix, my whole world changed and I'm questioning everything. I'll tell you why he deserves our collective apology, plus updates from all around the NFL as we head into the second week of preseason. That's good sports. Hey, today's episode is sponsored by my friend from Underdog Fantasy. It's August, which means it's officially fantasy drafting season. And right now you can play against me in my private drafts. I've linked some $10 uh, slow 12 person drafts below. So feel free to join those and play against me if you wanna throw your money right into my pocket. With Underdog, once you draft, you're done. There's no managing the league, as it's a best ball format, meaning they will tally your best score every week, so you will never leave your highest scoring player on the bench. And with the slow draft, you make all of your selections at your leisure. And if you want a chance to win much, much bigger prizes, you can enter the Best Ball Mania 3 tournament. Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100, so you can enter the Best Ball Mania with free money and a chance to win two million for first place and one million for second place. Just use my code, that's good, when you sign up and come beat my butt in the private leagues below. And my good guy of the week award goes to Steelers head coach, Mike Tomlin. Give him coach of the year right now. Apparently Mike Tomlin saw some kids fighting in the street while in his car. He got out to talk to them. The kids stopped fighting because it was fucking Mike Tomlin. And after spending a few hours with them, he brought them as guests to Steelers training camp where they did drills along with Najee Harris which is really cool. The irony here is that the Steelers' own wide receivers have never shown this kind of respect for Mike Tomlin. Uh, I know, there are a lot of negative stories out here because that's all people click on, but I love this shit. If I ever stepped out of my car when kids were fighting, they'd just beat the piss out of me, Lord of the Fly style. So respect to Tomlin for not being scared in that situation. Uh, Chiefs receiver, McCole Hardman, left the Chiefs practice earlier this week with a groin spasm, or as everyone else calls it, a boner. B's been a, a hung. This isn't considered serious and should be relieved manually. And doctors pointed out with a last name like Hardman, this is bound to happen from time to time. The Chargers extended safety Derwin James for four years at $76.4 million, making James the highest paid safety in NFL history. The Chargers now have four defensive players, all making over $15 million per year, which is hilarious when you remember that their defense gave up the third most rushing yards in 2021. We're not paying them to tackle. And if you're thinking, hey, they were better against the pass, it's because teams were too busy running the ball down their throats. As you probably know by now, Tom Brady has been given an extended excused absence from the Buccaneers training camp. Uh, this was actually Antonio Brown's response on Twitter. Tom Brady manipulate the game, gets 14 days, go home, get his mind right, LOL. Now you see the difference. Put that shit on. A lot of people are telling Antonio Brown to shut up and show some respect for the quarterback who got him a ring. Personally, I think the NFL should give Antonio Brown 14 days just to see if he could write one complete sentence. If he does, he's back in the league. This led me to learning that there is actually a Twitter account devoted to translating AB tweets. Translation here, 
It's funny how Tom Brady controls the entire NFL and gets off until August 20th due to personal reasons. I hope you all see the difference with how the Buccaneers treat him compared to how they treated me. Now, I did see Lindsay OK on Twitter suggest Tom Brady may be a contestant on The Masked Singer, and that's the reason for his absence. He is a contestant on The Masked Singer, which is one of my favorite shows, so that's the only reason why I think this theory could work. Interesting. The biggest surprise to me is not that Tom Brady might be missing time for this, but that The Masked Singer is anyone's favorite show. One of my favorite shows. Also, this would make sense that Antonio Brown is jealous as Tom Brady steals his thunder in AB's arena, sucking at music. While there are some interesting correlations, it only takes a day to show up in film for a show like this, so I am a no on this theory. And I still believe Tom Brady is getting rectal surgery or penis enlargement surgery, and that's why he's gone. Kirk Cousins has added the F-bomb to his catchphrase. You like that? You like that? You like that is now you fucking like that. Unfortunately, Kirk, saying fuck does not make you better at your job. Trust me, I should know. Like you, it doesn't matter what I do. I'll never be considered one of the elite players at my position, even though my stats are pretty consistent. Even though you had the highest passer rating for deep balls in 2021, and I dropped some great episodes of my series, Balls Deep, both of us are destined to watch everyone else soar while we get disrespected for being weird. And no, I don't fucking like that. Joe Burrow returned to practice for the first time after having his app appendectomy. The Bengals offensive line was so bad last season that his appendix exploded just so it wouldn't have to do another season of football. Poor appendix didn't know how much better that unit should be this season. R.I.P. Joe Burrow's append app appendix. Hey guys, and well, this... <laughs> Not a good segue. Hey guys, in terms of the Zach Wilson knee injury, I have good news. It was just a meniscus trim. The thought was that it would be just a meniscus trim rather than a repair, but we did not know what it was going to be. The good news for the Jets, this was just a trim. No, you trim your goddamn beard not ligaments in your body. We're so delusional when it comes to NFL players and their injuries. Ah, oh, yeah, he's lucky he didn't tear his ACL. They just had to uh, reattach his hip and remove part of his brain. He should be dead, but we expect him back in uh, four to six weeks, so good news. Hollywood Brown revealed one reason he wanted to leave Baltimore. Here's his quote. I want to feel like I am part of something to win. At the Ravens, I just felt like sometimes they really didn't need me. Regardless if I was there or not, they were going to win games. I love the game too much. That's a funny way of saying you are happy to play for a shittier team because they will need you more. <laughs> if you love the game so much, you'd do anything to win. You love attention too much, so you wanted more passes thrown your way. That's what that quote means. Good news for aggressive fantasy football drafters. It looks like Saints running back Alvin Kamara won't be suspended until the 2023 season. Kamara was involved in a felony assault case in Las Vegas over the off season. And because the hearing for that case has been postponed, it looks like Kamara will be cleared to play for the 2022 season with the Saints. If anything, he'll likely uh, be suspended at the start of the 2023 season, but that's like five years away at this point, so who really cares? I just took him in one of my underdog leagues. Now I missed this yesterday during the Deshaun Watson segment because there was a lot to digest. Like your second dinner at midnight after drinking. Not everything's gonna get processed correctly. So two things here. One, like we all suspected, this was the first time the NFL had ever given out an 11 game suspension. So yeah, the return for the Texans game was no accident. At this point, I'm just waiting for the NFL to announce the entire game will be broadcast on Sunday Night Football with Bill O'Brien's chin hole providing the commentary for the whole game and DeAndre Hopkins will be a guest sideline reporter just so everybody tunes in. Second, 
In order for Watson to be reinstated after his 11 game ban, he must comply with treatment recommendations provided by a third party behavioral expert. His reinstatement is contingent upon his compliance with the treatment plan. If he does not comply, his reinstatement could be delayed. Plus, there could be more discipline added. Uh, how do you treat someone who refuses to admit they did anything wrong? That's my question, because everybody knows the first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. So really what this means is if Deshaun Watson gives the NFL any reason to extend his punishment, they will. If the public lambasting of the NFL's handling of this situation continues, I also think there's a chance the NFL can easily say Watson did not comply with their therapy guidelines because that's kind of a gray thing, a gray area, and this suspension could continue for the remainder of this season, but only after he plays the Texans. Deshaun Watson could kill a literal Texan, Jerry Jones, and the NFL would be like, We'll handle this matter after he plays in prime time against the Texans. And finally, I watched the Manti Teo documentary on Netflix, and that shit is primo. I think it's a must watch for any diehard NFL fan who remembers how weird the Manti Teo catfishing story was. I think it will shine a light on the insane lengths the person catfishing Teo went to trick him into believing that he had a girlfriend who was not real. Didn't expect it to blow up so quickly. This is about to hit the fan. That's when everything went chaotic. I love you so much. There were two people. It was crazy. I honestly feel a little bad for every invisible girlfriend joke I made about Teo. I'm sorry. And now I see that instead of tearing a man down for believing a non-existent person was his girlfriend, we should have been making fun of the team that drafted him in the second round, the Chargers appropriately a team who keeps hoping their non-existent fan base is real. I should have been saying Manti Teo's girlfriend may not have existed, but I bet Philip Rivers could still get her pregnant. I know, I know what you're saying. Those are more jokes, but those jokes poke fun at the Chargers and at Philip Rivers' sperm, not Manti Teo. Uh, seriously though, watch the documentary and ask yourself if, if what happened to Manti Teo is fair. The way he was treated for something that was not done by him, but to him is pretty alarming. It's also sad that this hoax was blamed on him by real media members, not schlubs like me, like real sports media and real media media, which now we know is a joke, but I think we took him a little more seriously back then. Uh, they were asking if Manti created a fake girlfriend to cover up the fact that he was gay. It's like Jesus Christ, man. Instead of showing sympathy and asking how this could have happened to a young and vulnerable man playing football at a high level in the spotlight, we just beat him down with a tsunami of criticism. Now, I'm not on a soapbox here. I'm sure I'm as guilty as anyone was. I mean, I just was in this paragraph or two before. We live in a pretty fucked up world though when it comes to tearing people down after building them up. And this event greatly affected Manti Teo in a very bad way and probably ruined his chances of reaching his potential in the NFL, not to mention the money it cost him when he fell out of the first round of the draft because of the way this event was covered and scared teams off. I'm a rise above all I have, bro. No matter how, how hard it is for me, I'm gonna look at all these people who make fun of me. And the people who actually believe in me is... I have to take a second to be like, they actually love me, man. They love you, they don't want to make fun of you, bro. Treat them nice in a world that's just spit on you. He talked about how this affected his ability to perform on the football field with anxiety, and I sympathize with that, and I get it. My one beef, though, with the documentary is not critiquing why maybe a guy like Manti fell for this. I think some light could have been shed on the consequences that come along with an ultra-religious upbringing that teach nothing but discipline. When you're not taught to question shit and just accept what you're being told, you may end up in situations where your good intentions will be taken advantage of. 
So I think they kind of missed there, but again, watch it for yourself because it is bizarre. And I think we all need to reevaluate the way we jump on criticizing people when we don't know the full story. So I am sorry, Manti. I'm sorry for whatever shitty jokes I made. And I think it was very brave of you to sit down and talk about this openly and candidly. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I got a video on the screen if you'd like to click that. It's free. Free videos here! Get your free videos on YouTube!